And having this conversation with us is a word winning registered dietitian with 10 years plus of, you know, practice. Ashley Kibuda, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's so good to be back. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, I, I'm sure I didn't say everything that. You, that's perfect. That's OK. You did well. Yes. <laughs> your, your CV is all the way oh, there. Gosh. You've done such a good job when it comes to helping people with, with their lives, with their health Thank and you. maintaining their weight. So Thank checking you. into that as well. Yes, it's but, my passion. Yes. But today we are talking about gut health. Yes, we are. Yes, a very trendy topic these days. Yes. So here to set the record straight on mm -hmm. all the science-based information. Mm -hmm. So yes. What is it? What is gut health? Yeah, so it's really hard to define gut health because there's no exact measures to say you have a healthy gut or you have an unhealthy gut. Mm -hmm. So we like to talk about the three Ds. Okay. So digestion. Mm -hmm. So how is your digestion? Do you have tolerable amounts of gas? Do you have excessive gas? Mm -hmm. You know, that's a way to judge the health of your gut, as well as having regular bowel movements. That's really important as well. The other thing is, do you have a disease in your GI tract? So IBS, for example, or colitis or Crohn's, that's another measure of that gut health. And then finally, diversity. Do you have a diverse range of gut um, bacteria mm -hmm. that lives within that gut because those are the three key factors that we look at um, in our ability to kind of see what is the status of your overall gut health. Wow. Yeah. So how do we determine each and every one of this? Yes, so just kind of by the few little tidbits of information I gave within the three Ds. Mm -hmm. So looking at, um, you know, how is your digestion? Really sorting that out. So do you have regular bowel movements? Do you have pain? Is there a lot of bloating? Do you have excessive mm. gas? So looking at that and then also, you know, do you have a disease of the gut? Okay. You know, so Crohn's, colitis, mm -hmm. IBS. So that's the irritable bowel syndrome. That's um, quite common as well. And then just making sure that we have a wide variety of gut um, bacteria and the mm -hmm. gut microbiomes that live within our gut. Mm -hmm. Because when we have this diverse variety, we're able to get more benefits. They're able to help us more in terms of our overall health, yeah. um, which we'll talk about. Why is it important? Why why is it important to just make sure that everything is going on over here? We just yes. eat and move on. Yes, exactly. So that's a great question. So <coughs> the thing is, is that the healthy gut bacteria helps us digest our food most efficient and effectively. So we're able to derive the most nutrients from our food because that bacteria really helps us do that. Um, so that's a key component. So if we're just eating food and not able to get all the nutrition, it's not as effective. Mm. It's not benefiting us as much. So again, that gut that um, gut bacteria is very helpful in extracting those nutrients. The other thing is that it keeps our intestinal cells healthy and well, so preventing us from chronic disease, you know, colon cancer, things like that. Um, also, it plays a role in preventing chronic disease. So heart disease, for example, if we have a healthy gut, some of that gut bacteria can, el can help control our cholesterol levels. It can increase our insulin sensitivity, so reducing our risk for diabetes or helping mm. to control that. Um, it can help in weight management. Um, so there's so many things that a healthy gut can help us do outside of just our gut. Yeah. Um, and there's more research that's constantly being done in this area mm -hmm. because we're finding that it's so connected to our overall health. Um, another thing is that it really helps our immune system because if we have a lot of good bacteria in our gut, mm -hmm. it can fight effectively against the bad bacteria that we may ingest or the pathogens that can make us sick. The good bacteria, if there's a, a lot of them, they can kill that bad bacteria more effectively and efficiently. So again, it's very helpful for that immune system. You know, I'm just thinking mm. how we just go to the gym, mm -hmm. We just, you know, I'm working out. Yeah. This is it. I'm doing a good job. Yeah. But then if I'm not looking at what is happening in my gut, then mm -hmm. I'm, go ahead. I, I could have done much more than just working out to just make sure that I am 
healthy. Absolutely. So, so many people think going to the gym is enough. Yeah. And going to the gym is fabulous. And I yes. encourage people to be active and have a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But we also need to look at what we're ingesting mm -hmm. and then how effective our gut is mm -hmm. at being able to derive those nutrients. Great. Yes. When we talk about the ba uh, the bacteria yes. that then needs to be healthy in that space, yes. uh, then that brings out the question on probiotics and yes. what's the importance of that. Yes. How do you know that this is the good one to have yes. or not? So that's a really good question. So the probiotics is that healthy gut bacteria, mm -hmm. what we really want more of, and we want to help that grow, survive, and thrive so it can help us most effectively. Um, and so the thing that science is showing us is that there's many different probiotics, right? Yes. There's like thousands of them. Yeah. And what we're realizing is that they're very specific. So we can't just say, I'm going to go take a random probiotic and it's going to cure my diarrhea or it's going to cure my upper respiratory tract infection. Mm -hmm. It's very disease specific. So you need to talk with somebody who knows the research mm -hmm. who can say, you know, um, I'm looking to treat, you know, upper respiratory infection. Here's the exact probiotic that you need. Mm -hmm. So it's very disease specific and many people don't recognize no, that. Not at all. It's just one of those things that are just yes, over the counter. A blanket cover, right? Yes. Like, let me just take this probiotics. I yes. heard it's healthy. And so we really do need to acknowledge that they're very specific mm -hmm. you know and research again there's so much more to be done you know so we really need to look at what is science showing us and how can I use that to then help the condition that I have um, the other thing to acknowledge as well is that it can take up to four weeks for that probiotic to be effective. So we can't expect to feel better after two days, you know, so it does take time because remember, we're growing that bacteria. Okay. And we also have to make sure that our gut is a healthy environment for that bacteria to grow, survive, and thrive. Mm -hmm. So we talk a lot about probiotics, which yeah. is that gut bacteria, mm -hmm. but something that's even almost more important is the prebiotics which is the food for the probiotics or the food for that healthy gut bacteria. Okay. And so what the food is, is fiber. So we need to focus on foods that are rich in fiber. So again, that bacteria can grow, survive and thrive. So just taking the probiotics is not enough. Correct. And it must be specific to the disease or the condition you're looking to treat. Yes. Yeah. And it will not work in two days. Exactly. <laughs> yes. We have to give it adequate time. Yeah. Yes. So, no so what's the adequate no time? So the four, the four weeks. The four weeks. Yes. So what you can do for overall yes. health is, I'm sure people are watching, okay, what can I do today? Yeah. So eat fermented foods. So um, this would be the most effective mm -hmm. at helping our gut mm -hmm. is going to be fermented dairy. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be your yogurt and your kefir. And this is consistently and repeatedly show the most evidence for improving your gut health mm -hmm. and improving other outcomes, especially with reducing cholesterol levels. So focus on eating those fermented foods and then really having a wide variety of plants, mm -hmm. plant-based foods in your diet, because okay. that gives us fiber. So again, that's the food for that healthy gut bacteria. So this is going to be your fruits, your vegetables, your whole grains, your nut butters, your seeds, things like that. Mm -hmm. So the most effective thing we can do is eat all those plant foods mm -hmm. and a wide variety because these probiotics, they like all the different um, fibers. You yes. know, one probiotic might like the fiber in grapes, one probiotic might like the fiber in quinoa, mm. you know, so the key is really to have this variety um, and that's how we're gonna get the most benefit. Wow. Yeah. What is it you would say that we eat mm. a lot that will probably or probably worsens the situation? In our um, gut. I would say it's probably not one specific thing. thing? It's yeah. just the lack of plants. Mm. So the lack of plants in our diet mm -hmm. is what is probably going to the, be the most hindering to our gut health. So again, the number one thing you can do to improve your gut health mm -hmm. is to eat a wide variety of plants. So they say have 30 different varieties of plant-based foods in a month. But think about that, you know, <laughs> your carbs, your grains, yes. all your different fruits and vegetables. Okay. So we're probably eating more variety than we actually think. Mm. But again, the key is that variety, not having the same thing every day. Because remember the different probiotics, like the different types of fibers found in the different plant-based foods.
Okay. Is that clear? Just say that again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so there's many different probiotics. Yes. And we're not clear which fiber each of the probiotics mm. likes. Okay. And so okay. the best thing we can do is eat a variety of plants. Yeah. So we ensure we're giving them as much of the things that they can possibly eat yeah. that they may like so they can grow, survive, and thrive. So should this be mm. uh, sort of like a monthly thing? Once mm. I'm done with my four weeks of probiotics, do I stop then? Yeah. When do I pick it up again? Yeah. Or do I pick it up again when I still when I feel yeah. funny? So that's a really good question. So what I would recommend in terms of, you're talking about the probiotic supplements. Yes. I always recommend food first. Okay. So that would be where I recommend the fermented dairy. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be the yogurt and the kefir. Mm -hmm. But should you have a specific condition like diarrhea, an upper respiratory infection, something like that, you know, you can go to somebody who knows specifically which probiotic treats that condition, and then you can be on that probiotic for as long as your doctor recommends, because mm -hmm. every condition is going to, to be different, right? Just like, um, the prescription for the probiotics and how long you should take them and which probiotic is going to be different depending on the disease that you're looking to treat. So okay. this is a lot of information. <laughs> there is a great resource on okay. Instagram called Vitamin PhD. I recommend everybody follow her, mm -hmm. Vitamin PhD. She is an expert in gut health mm -hmm. and all the science-based information when it comes to that. Um, so she even has a chart that says which probiotic has been shown to impact what specific disease. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. But I would highly recommend that we see someone before you go there yes. asking for whatever it is that you think we are talking about. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, whatever Ashley was saying, <laughs> yes. just give that to me. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, the take-home message, to really simplify it, yes. is eat your fermented dairy. Yes. If, if your diet allows, if you're not lactose intolerant and things like that, and then the biggest thing you can do is eat a variety of plant-based foods. Mm -hmm. So if you walk away with two key points, that's what it is. Fermented foods and eat a wide variety of plant-based foods. Because again, the fiber in those plant-based foods is yes. really the food for the probiotics. Mm. So if we're not feeding them, they can't grow, survive, and thrive. Okay. Yeah, so th those would be the take home messages. Is there a relationship to our intake of water when it comes to all of this? Um, so I don't know that there's a direct specific link, yes. but I will say water is very important mm -hmm. and very essential. Mm -hmm. And when we look at gut health, um, you know, if we're not taking in enough water, we can become constipated, um, which then obviously directly impacts gut health. So definitely water is a very important part of our overall, you know, dietary intake. So let's not mistake you not taking water to thinking that you do not have enough bacteria. Yes. So it could just be your constipated. Exactly. <laughs> so just take your yes. water. Yes, yes. So take your water, <laughs> yes. But then again, you know, there's so many things we can do to treat the constipation. So water, make sure that you're eating enough fiber from your plant-based foods, mm -hmm. making sure that you're being active and moving your body mm -hmm. to get things going. Mm -hmm. um, so that's also really important too. So um, there's many factors that can impact that constipation. Okay, mm -hmm. when you come to vitamins and what we need for our gut health, yes. what would you highly recommend? Um, in terms of vitamins for gut health, you know, Honestly, just eating a well-balanced diet, mm -hmm. lots of plant-based foods, mm -hmm. lots of fiber, um, drinking your water, um, and eating those probiotics, you know, the fermented dairy where most of that research is showing yes. the, the most benefit um, to the host, which is us. Yes. But outside of that, there's not a specific vitamin mm -hmm. that you should take other than a very well-balanced diet. Great. Mm -hmm. And for proper or regular checkups when it comes to our gut health, uh, apart from how we feel, because yes. by the time we're feeling that something is not mm -hmm. okay, yes. then it is... We're, we're, we're way gone. Exactly. <laughs> we're exactly. Way gone. exactly. So for the regular checks, mm. how often should that be? Mm -hmm. And, you mm -hmm. know, what will be, what will 
they be looking at to see if we are okay yes. or if we need to up something or reduce something. Yes. So I would recommend going to a GI doctor, mm -hmm. a gastrointestinal doctor, because this is their expertise and they would be able to give you that best advice. Mm. You know, so I'm here for the nutrition component. Mm. They're there really to do that assessment mm -hmm. and to look and to, you know, say this warrants X specific test, you mm. know, that we need to do. So that would be the best thing. Um, and you know, it's recommended to get a physical every year with a general practitioner yes. and then they can refer you out if they think that there's some gut issues going on mm. so it's really about being a part of this care team where you have all the right experts on board to help you have that best holistic approach to your overall wellness and what they say is what we've put in our body is like 80 percent yes of what makes us who we are and Absolutely. how healthy we are or not. Absolutely, <laughs> it's so it's so important. People are finally recognizing that nutrition connection to our overall health and, and well-being. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And for everybody or anybody out there who would love to get your help, Ashley, how yes. do they get in touch yes. with you? Yes, so my office is called Performance Medicine. Mm -hmm. It's in Parklands off Iregi Road, so mm -hmm. Performance Medicine, or easiest um, probably on Instagram. So my Instagram handle is its.time, spelt like the herb, a little food pun there for you. <laughs> so um, its.time underscore. Okay. Yeah. Just say that again. Yes. So it's dot yes. T H Y M E mm -hmm. underscore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or they can search Ashley Kibuda and it okay. should show up. Okay. And then up. that will just. Pop. Yes. No, that was nice. Yeah. <laughs> Or performance medicine. Yes. Yes. So that's where my office okay. is. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Ashley, for Thank coming. Thank you so through. much for having and me. And for impacting wealth, uh, wealth of knowledge. We're trying. Yes. One day at a time. <laughs> yes. We are going to take a very short commercial break, but remember, I've got t-shirts for you, courtesy of, of Kipps Technical College. And all you have to do is tell me, yeah, um, what are some of the benefits of being a kid student? Triple one, triple four, triple one. That is our SMS line, Switch TV KE on Instagram, Switch TV Kenya on Facebook. We will be right back after this break. <laughs>